Well, let's follow up on the animal protection measures being proposed by the Justice Minister today. Camille Labchuk is the Executive Director of Animal Justice. She's with me in our studio now. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, the Minister of Justice is framing this legislation as, as the way she put, put it today was new protections for, for children and animals flowing from a Supreme Court ruling in 2016. Can we start there? What, what did that ruling say? The ruling, unfortunately, and very surprisingly to most people, said that most forms of bestiality in this country are not illegal because our laws are so out of date that when they were contemplated, it required penetration of an animal to complete that offense. Okay. Uh, and so what has, and so that's 2016. We have, um, and I know you don't think it goes far, and we have some action from the government today. What has the delay meant uh, in you know, from the time of the court decision, the court ruling, till the action taken by the government today. Right. Well, it's been two and a half years now since the Supreme Court made that decision, and there's been a lot of pushing of the government to get this happening. Uh, there have been two private members' bills in the interim, so Nathaniel Erskine-Smith had a larger animal cruelty bill that included this, mm -hmm. and Michelle Rempel from the Conservatives included a bill on bestiality specifically as well. So finally we're seeing this. We're disappointed that it took this long to get to it because it is literally just a 14-word amendment to the criminal code, and it shouldn't have taken that long, but it's good that it's finally here. Right, and, and essentially what it says is it, it now essentially prohibits, as I understand it, looking through it, prohibits uh, any, any uh, sexual contact between uh, a human and an animal for the any contact for the purpose of, of sexual sexual activity and, and 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 the government makes the point that that closes the loophole in the law does it it closes the loophole where some people were just not able to be prosecuted for non penetrative conduct but what it does is it opens up one more loophole which is so right now anyone convicted of an animal cruelty offense under the code they can be subject to a prohibition order from a judge upon conviction so that they can never have an animal again for the rest of their life. But the bestiality provision that was introduced today doesn't include that measure, so the judges can't necessarily impose a ban on animal ownership. So we think that needs to happen as this bill works its way through Parliament. Okay. Uh, where else is it, is, does it not meet the test as far as you're concerned? Well, the bigger issue is that when the government voted against broader animal cruelty reforms in uh, 2016, October 2016, so two years ago, it voted down animal cruelty legislation that would have modernized our severely outdated laws on a number of facets. Bestiality was one of those things, animal fighting was another one of those things. But today's legislation completely ignores all the rest of that, which is something they have promised to work on. So we're wondering, where is the action on that? Bill Blair stood up and spoke in the House of Commons about this legislation and said that they were taking it seriously, that they would consult, they would revise the overall laws, but so far we haven't seen that. Okay, have you been part of the consultations that the you know, uh, minister said the government needed uh, more time to have these extensive consultations. So did, did they come to you? Did they, who have they spoken with that, that's causing the delay, I guess? Well, to my knowledge, they have not started consultations on substantively revising the outdated animal cruelty sections of the criminal code. So we haven't been consulted. Colleagues and other groups have not been consulted. We don't think it's something that they've undertaken yet, and we think it really needs to happen. If you poll Canadians, over 90% support stronger animal cruelty laws. And you can't get 90% of Canadians to agree on too much, mm -hmm. but that's one thing they do agree on, so it needs to happen. Well, why do you think there's a delay? If, there, if, there's this, um, if there's this body of consensus, what's taking so much time? There's no real good reason to explain why there has been a delay. It's something that enjoys very broad support among the public. I know that tens of thousands of emails and phone calls have been made to the minister's office, to members of parliament asking for change. What we are concerned about is the influence of industries like farming, like hunting, like fishing. Every time animal cruelty legislation comes up, they fearmonger and say that it will shut down their industries, which of course is not accurate. The only thing that anyone is asking for is common sense reforms to make it easier to prosecute sadistic animal cruelty, and that's something everyone can agree on. Right. So, does that mean that you're that you're you're not looking to target, uh, you know, practices, farming practices today in Canada, unless there's some sadistic element to them? Well, the criminal code is used to punish sadistic conduct. When you look at the overall regulation of farming practices, that's a different area, but also one that does need attention. A lot of people are very surprised to learn that there is no regulations pertaining to the treatment of animals on farms up until the day they're transported for slaughter. So their entire lives from when they're born 
until they're transported, are just unregulated. So that needs to change too, but... And none of that is covered in this bill? No, no, that's far beyond the scope of what, what's covered today. All right, uh, lots to watch for. Uh, thanks for uh, coming to talk with us today. Uh, Camille Lapchak from Animal Justice. Good thanks for having you. me.